Hello, uh, welcome uh, to this introductory video about the new toolbox of the International Commission on Illumination, the CIE. My name is Luc Schlangen. I'm a division director in CIE and have chaired the committee that wrote the CIE S26 standard for which the new toolbox is created. The standard S26 defines metrology to quantify light for its non-visual responses, such as regulating the time of our sleep-wake cycle, our hormone production, and the strength of our circadian rhythms. The metrology is based on five retinal photoreceptors, the S, M, and L cone, rods, and melanopsin-based photoreceptors, denoted as IPRGCs, or intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. The standard provides five action spectra to describe the spectral sensitivity of each of these five photoreceptors. On the screen right now, you can see the rhodopic action spectrum, the S-cone opic action spectrum, the M-cone opic action spectrum, the L-cone opic action spectrum, and the melanopic action spectrum. All five alpha opic photoreceptors can contribute to the non-visual responses of light. However, these responses are mainly controlled by the melanopsin containing intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, the IPRGCs. And that is why in the standard, these light induced effects of IPRGCs are denoted as IPRGC influenced light responses. In this video, I'm going to interview Luke Price. He's a member of the CAE committee that wrote the new standard. Luke translated it into a new toolbox that the CAE is launching to support the standard and its users. Luke, welcome. Can you explain us what does the new toolbox do? Hello, Luke. Um, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so the toolbox helps doing um, alpha opic calculations. So calculations for non-visual responses to light and IPRGC influence responses to light, which are the same thing. Um, now, because lighting professionals and photobiologists are interested in this topic, the toolbox also provides conversions between the different systems that people use for presenting the light quantities. Um, so the standard that Luke just talked about introduced five action spectra related to non-visual responses to light, one for each of the five human photoreceptor types. Um, and these can be used to calculate five, again, five alpha-opic quantities, but in three different systems. Um, it, it, for example, uh, weighted irradiance values, equivalent illuminance values, and weighted photon irradiance values which are sometimes used in photobiology. So the three systems are known officially as the radiometric system, the photometric system, and finally, the photon system. Can you explain how to use the toolbox? How does it work? Yeah, um, so ideally, um, we, we want people to enter uh, spectral measurement data um, to do their calculations with. Um, and I have an example here um, with um, an LED measurement, um, and I hope that's on the screen for you. Um, and you can see that the dark blue cells are the inputs in the toolbox, um, and the range of dark blue cells at the bottom are the spectral measurement data themselves. Um, and with all these inputs completed, um, you, um, so there you can see the range of spectral data um, and with all these inputs completed, you get charts um, which show you uh, an important part of how the calculation is done. So on the left-hand side, we have your measurement data, the unweighted spectral irradiance in the top left. Um, and then when they're multiplied by the spectral weighting curves, the alpha opic action spectra, uh, the five uh, curves there in the middle at the top, uh, you get the five curves on the top right, which show the alpha opic weighted spectra um, and those can be used directly in the calculation of alpha-opic irradiance. Um, and so um, we also have a sheet showing numerically what the answers are. Um, and for this particular measurement, the illuminance was 10,000 lux. Um, and, and we can see that using the um, equivalent daylight illuminance system, 
within the new standard, we get alphopic uh, EDI values, equivalent daylight illuminance, um, and the melanopic EDI is 6,400 uh, lux approximately. Um, um, so we can see um, what that is, and the melanopic equivalent daylight illuminance needs to be explained, and it's best explained as the actual illuminance from the daylight source that you saw in the charts earlier that would provide the same melanopic light that is present in the measured spectrum. How would I know how to do it all that and how to operate a toolbox? Yeah, um, that's um, a good question. And um, you saw that there were some other inputs that I didn't explain as we went through. Um, we have a, a visual uh, user guide which explains step by step how you fill in each uh, input so that you can get through to the answers that you want. What do I do in case I have an LED lighting of 4000 Kelvin with 250 lux at the eye position? How do I know which alpha opic inputs apply for that condition? How would you proceed to calculate those? Can you show us? Right, so that's a very uh, useful example because um, the type of LED you're talking about is built in uh, to the toolbox. So people might be familiar with the old toolbox, which had a, an approximate mode. We also have the same system within the new toolbox where you can choose one of the preloaded spectrums and do a calculation with that. Um, and so um, I have um, some illustrations of the spectra that are available in these charts. We have, um, first of all, we have the reference spectrum that we're using to do the EDI calculations anyway, which is daylight D65. And you can see the chart for that now. Um, and um, we also have uh, CIE Illuminant A, which is an incandescent or a tungsten halogen-like spectrum um, with a correlated color, color temperature of about 2,800 Kelvin. Um, we have a fluorescent light source, FL11, and we have also a standard CIE LED um, spectrum LED B3, which is actually the one that I was using in my previous example as well, but I showed you the spectral data. Um, and then finally, we have Illuminant E, which is an equi energy source, um, which it means it has a uniform uh, distribution in the radiometric system, so um, value constant across the whole spectrum. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the input sheet, um, and one of the early inputs um, is uh, to put in the spectrum uh, that you want. Um, and instead of using user, a user spectrum, I can select uh, LED B3. Um, and then if I carry on down, um, the type of quantity I want to enter um, from this list is uh, the illuminance. Um, and I don't need to put any prefixes in because you said it was 250 lux, and lux is the units that this next input wants. So I write 250 in there we can go straight over um, to uh, the outputs and we can see what the different values are, for example, of the alpha opic EDI values, the equivalent daylight illuminance values are all displayed along there. And as you can see, none of them is exactly 250 looks because that's the visual illuminance. These are the alpha opic illuminance values. The CIE has recently issued a position statement, proper light at the proper time. And this is based on the new metrology of S26. The CIE recommends now to no longer use the old metrology of the consensus paper quantifying light in the melanopsin age. That consensus paper also came with a toolbox, and also the CIE had a toolbox for that consensus paper. Is that old toolbox now redundant? Uh, yeah, so what we've done with the new toolbox is make sure that people can reproduce the calculations from the old toolbox uh, when that's needed. So, for example, if they're looking at a paper that used that system and wanted to convert it into the new system, uh, the new toolbox can be used for that. Um, so there, there shouldn't be anything that people feel the need to go back to the old toolbox for other than to just check their sanity, I suppose, that things are working the same because that, that's all been done and checked. Um, so um, this new toolbox replaces that um, um, toolbox, um, and um, I think the, cha the changes to the system in the new standard are fairly minor. But probably the, the nicest thing is we've added daylight D65 as a reference illuminant. Um, it's, now it's important for CIE to get everyone to use uh, 
uh, up-to-date shared standards. So we want people all to use this new method uh, wherever possible. The toolbox is a new publication type for CIE. Where can one access the toolbox? Uh, right, yes. Um, so it's uh, basically a managed system. So if we need to do updates, um, we will put new updates back onto the website where it's freely available through the CIE. Um, and uh, there'll be uh, a link showing on your screen.